life, a lifetime imprisonment. You know, to be involved in a case with somebody when they're being charged with really serious crimes makes a big difference. I mean, that's where you learn about human rights. When you, your contact with your clients who've come from places where they've been tortured or whatever, you learn from people. And I feel that I was a privileged one because I, I, I met such extraordinary people. And, uh, how do you get the ability to concentrate fully for such big things? I well, would feel so much fear. Um, well, I, I, I think I've stopped feeling fear. I, I, I learned to conquer that, you know, but being in the courtroom or being in official places. I, I conquered that quite early on. Um, but... You know, the, the heart, the heart the, it's really, as long as you feel that you believe that it's important that people are properly dealt with and that they're dealt with with respect um, in processes and that you try to get justice for people, um, I do think that actually justice is one of the supreme values. I really do feel it's so important that people are treated fairly and our society is so lacking in fairness. Yes, sir? Yeah. You know, you look at the, 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 the differences in terms of, you know, I mean, this, the, the idea that in a rich world, which our world really is, there are so many people who are still poor. There's a, there's a madness there, isn't there? But, um, of course, I mean, the bit that I'm really dealing with is how, about bringing the reality of people's lives into the courtroom so that it's not dealt with as some kind of separate thing, but actually you try to bring that outside world into this, into processes so that greater fairness is done. I don't think you can do justice without doing, you know, being alert to social justice issues too. Why do you think, why is it that, uh, what has stunned me the most, because we ended up uh, living in a place for Mossad in Manchester, which is considered... Very poor. Yeah. Uh, honestly, initially I was in, in shock. And it took me a few months to get over it. And then, since it's my life, you know, to, to, to look for good things, it turned out one of the most interesting places I've ever been to. I didn't really need to travel anymore. It's all there. But then you live with neighbors who with no teeth and he's 18. And he, you know, he's trying to survive on 10 pounds a month for, for gas and electricity. And you ask yourself, this is a country whose fifth or sixth richest. On, wh wh why is it like that? I, I well, there's, but there's a myth that's put out that we're poor. You know, the, the story's being told to ordinary people that actually we're in terrible debt and we're in a terrible place and so on. And, and it's actually a distortion of reality. I mean, the real poverty that's being experienced by some of our communities is just beyond imagining that it's happening in a rich, in a rich country like ours or in the United States. But it's about the greed of the few um, and the, the unwillingness to, to really share the very thing that we tell our children to do from the earliest days about sharing. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I admire you for living, going and living in Moss Side and seeing what that's like because it's probably in some ways as shocking as going to live in rural Yemen. Basically, I, I got an email from my wife yesterday and she wrote, you wake up in the morning full of inspiration, you know, I'm going to do things today. Then you open the door, no greenery, only quote-unquote people are trying to survive and you lose it. You lose it because... Gotta, and that's what I, why I, I admire them so much, to wake up every morning and actually go out and do something. Yeah. Now, people have no idea how hard it is. And they've no idea that when your life has become, been emptied of a, f some fulfilling work or uh, emptied of, of opportunity, then trying to get it back on track is very difficult. I mean, people can be so punitive um, of people who, you know, when you tr to try to bring rhythm back into a life where there has been no rhythm, getting up in the morning. Um, getting to work by, you know, nine o'clock for nine o'clock, you know, making sure that you, you know, you allow for the risk that a bus might not turn up. All those things that, that we all do 
fall away when you suddenly are made unemployed and or you've never had the opportunity of, of, of real work um, or are not trained for anything. And so, you know, there's no order to your day and it becomes very hard, to, you know, to put that onto it. And, and, and as you say, if you're living around in places lacking in beauty, why would you feel inspired about what life can be about? So is it any wonder that people do the, the great thing of reproducing, having children who, who bring laughter um, and bring that sense of joy? There's something very uplifting, and, and that's why the poor so often have so many children. Why do you think we've become this greedy then? Well, I think that we, 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 we've elevated money into a supreme value. You know, we've made it that, you know, you, you, you judge people, um, you know, and admire people who are successful because of their riches and so on, rather than admiring yeah. other values. And so we've put money on, on a pedestal. You know, it used to be class, but now it's, you know, a combination of money being the kind of way in which certain, that links, you know, in people's minds with some sort of superior value. Um, no, I think it's about... Um, materialism and I think that we have become a society that has forgotten what, what the real stuff is and we've also forgotten solidarity that it's a, it's a, it's, you know, it feels good to help other people it actually does it feels good to give things away um, people should try it How do you survive in if I say an atmosphere which is uh well, pretty much demands that you kind of fit in when you have these fantastic ideas. Well, I, I, I think that the interesting thing is if you can retain a sense of yourself as, uh, as, as an outsider. You see, and, and I made someone laugh last night where I said, well, you see, I feel that I am pretty much still an outsider because I don't... You see, if you don't have opportunities to spend time with people who really are um, on the edge, you know, people who are um, feeling um, very much as though their society is um, in pariahs. You know, there's nothing kind of reminds you more about, you know, how, a, how the establishment works than seeing those who suffer from, you know, being left on the outside. And so I always try to keep that going. It's why I still do a certain amount of practice in law. Uh, why, even although I'm doing other things, in education and, and so on, and I'm in Parliament, but I really do think that going to a prison, sitting in the queue, being searched repeatedly, you know, it's good for me. And, it's, and we should all be reminded constantly that actually life isn't this good for many, many people. And, um, and so I still have that sense of having one foot in and one foot out. You, uh, how do you keep up that positive hope then? Well, because I, 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 one of the great things that, that I have found is that if you can spend time with young people, it, young people, you know, they come out of the egg, you know, they come, they come out, you know, feeling optimistic and it's, and it's beaten out of them. But I, I love being with students because they still think they can change the world. And, um, and we've got to keep hold of that bit of ourselves that is the student. And I, I, I still have it in there. I still feel that we could turn this around. We could actually create a world that was different. Um, but would, it would involve incredible boldness. But um, if you spend time with young people, they keep your hope alive. Hmm. What a wise thing. It, it, it really does. So, so how do you look up on saying... Britain today then when it comes to you said uh, you know splitting up like Scotland, England, Wales or I don't know even living in the EU is, you would say it's not a good idea no 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 I'm, I'm very much uh, in favour of, of being part of Europe and the European Union I, I want us to be part I want us to be part of that I think, that, I think the strength in being part uh, and coming together to find solutions to things let's look at the business of the banking crisis now, it happened governments nowadays because you know business is international 
Um, the threat only has to be made to a country that we're going to remove our, our businesses. If you insist on taxing us too much, we're going to go off somewhere else. And so people become frightened. They're held to ransom by big business or by bankers. Um, and that's a bit of me feels like saying, well, is that really true? If that's really true, then maybe you should just go because maybe we'd, it'd be better if we created a different kind of society. I don't want... If somebody tries to hold me to ransom, there's something in me that immediately wants to resist that. And so I feel that um, it's part of the problem nowadays is that governments, whether it's in Westminster, whether it's going to be in Scotland, will always have those threats being made. We will cripple your nation economically. And we have to all come together and say, we're not going to let that happen. Actually, we're not going to let you guys run the things uh, from behind a screen where we don't even get to know who you are. But yet you hold our politicians to ransom in this way. And I think that's partly that we've become too craven to international capital. And I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with markets. Markets are a good thing. People being able to sell their goods, being able to produce things, excite us with their creativity and their entrepreneurship. I'm all in favour of all of that. You do need banks. But what I want are institutions that are ethical and that are there to serve the people and not the few. Sorry, I just taught her how to untie laces. So. Yeah, this is Oh, have yeah. I not got somebody coming to see me? Are you going to? Um, have you had a drink? Have you got some things to? Uh, would she, would she like? she's fine. How inspiring! You are oh, extraordinary. You But you should go up to Scotland just now because you see, Scotland the people up there are not shy to talk to you. They'll all talk to you. Mm. I like your shoes. They're very, very nice. I'm wearing my trainers today because I'm wanting to do lots of walking. The weather's nice, so I'm doing walking. Yes, is there? There's a bathroom in there. Is that what you said? No. 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 That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Listen, who is this woman?